Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks. Problem of the day on today's problem is decimal equivalent of binary linked list and it is an easy level problem. So the problem basically says that you have been given a binary number represented with the help of a linked list. So if you see this particular linked list, it is 0, 1, 1 and it is a binary number and the binary digits are written from left to right. Now we have to find out the decimal equivalent of this particular number. Similarly, you can clearly see that 1110 is the binary number and we have to find, it, find its decimal equivalent. Now I will be discussing two different ways of solving this particular problem and uh, let us see what we can do. So the problem is very straightforward, you just need to know how to traverse a linked list and I will be uh, just discussing two different ways of parsing this particular binary number nothing really to do with the linked list part, just different ways to form your answer. So the first way can be to just go by this particular definition that they have given, right. So what you want to do is, you want to have the first digit and multiply it with the power of 3 and as a second digit multiply it with the power of 2, then power of 1 and then power of 0, right. So everything, so the digits are in binary, that is why we multiply with powers of 2. Now, this is really only possible when you have only the size of the linked list or the array, right. So in this particular case, you will not be having the size, although they have given the input n is equal to 4, but we will not be getting that input. So we cannot directly initialize this value to 3, right, or n minus 1 in any general case, because we do not know the value of n. We only know that this last digit, last digit should be the one with which has the power 0, right. This is the only fact I know. So how do I solve this particular problem without even knowing the value of n? What I can do is I can go to the last element in the linked list and start from there, right? And give it the power of 2, then come to the previous element, give it the power of 2, 1 and come to the previous element, give it the power 2 square and then come to the previous element, give it the power 2 cube, right? So at each position, if uh, the value is 1, I am going to add the current power. If the value is 0, I am not going to do anything. Right, I am not going to add the current power and this is how you can basically find your whole answer. If I show you my code for this particular approach, what I have done is I have initialized my answer with 0, I have set my power of 2 as 1. Now I will just call my traverse function with the help of head. Right. Now if my node is null pointer, that means if not node, I am just going to return from here, otherwise I am just going to call the traverse function. So you see first of all I am just going to try to go to the end. So without even doing any operations, if this is my linked list. So if my linked list looks like this, I start from here, then I go to the next node, then I go to the next node and then I go to the next node and then I finally reach the null pointer, right. From here I am going to return. Now after returning, I am going to perform some operations. If node data, that means if node data is true or it is 1, I am going to add this power of 2 into my answer and then take it small. And then I am going to multiply this power of 2 by 2. So what is happening? Initially, this power of 2 value is 1. So that is represented and that is equivalent to 2 raised to the power 0. After adding my value to the answer, I multiply it with 2. So it becomes 2 raised to the power 1 when it reaches here. After calculating the answer here, I am multiplying it by 2. So that when it reaches here, it becomes 2 raised to the power 2 and so on this continues. So this is one way of solving this particular problem by just going with the definition they have provided us, right, here. Now, you can try to optimize this since this is using recursion or if you don't want to use recursion, you will have to use a stack, right. In both of the cases, the space complexity will be O of n, right. So how do we actually optimize this particular approach a little bit? We just need to uh, change the way we think about this problem. Instead of going to this particular definition, we are just going to modify it a little bit. So what we can do is, we can initialize answer with 0. At each stage, we are going to multiply our answer with 2. So how, how does it, how does this particular thing help us? So let's say our value is 0, right? We multiply it with 2. It is equivalent to left shifting the number one time, right? So multiplying by 2 or left shifting any binary number by one time is equivalent, right? So 0 left shift one times is 0 itself. And then we add the value which is present at the current position, right? So initially it is 1. So now we will have, let's say 1 in our answer. Now when I reach the next position at this particular one, the second position, what I am going to do is, I am going to take this particular number, the current answer that I have, multiply it by 2 
or in other words i am going to left shift it by 1 so this 1 becomes 1 0 like this right now i am going to add this particular value right so in 1 0 if i add 1 it is going to become 1 1 then i move on to the next number it is this one again i left shift it by 1 or i multiply this number by 2 remember this is in binary format this is not a decimal number this is in binary format if i left shift it by 1 or multiply the number by 2 it is going to become 1 1 0 right now i can add this particular number so this will become 1 1 1 now again i can left shift this number by 1 or multiply it by 2 it will become 1 1 1 0 since here 0 is present i do not need to add anything at this particular position so here you can see i obtained the same by need number the only difference is this time it will be in integer format or in decimal format right so instead of writing this particular code what you can do is you can also write this particular code this works let me just quickly submit this and show you that this is also correct So you see this passes all the test cases, but let me just uh, write the uh, another code. So I am going to initialize my answer with one, with 1. Now while my head, that means while head is not equal to null pointer, what I am going to do is I am going to make answer is equals to answer into 2 and take its mod. So mod a value they have already defined here, right. So have they, here they have defined the mod value. So we do need to define it again, we are just going to use it. Now what I am going to do, I am going to add the current value, answer is equals to answer plus head data and then take its mod, right. And then I am going to set head is equals to head next. So you see this makes our code a little bit simpler and also uh, we do not need to use recursion or any extra space now. All of it will be computed with the help of this thing only. We see that the sample test cases are passing, we are just going to submit it. So you see this also passes all the test cases. This solution is correct as well. I hope that you guys were able to understand both of the approaches. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really really helps the YouTube will got them to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.